the last presentation from our startups, which is, uh, it seems to be a little bit like a uh, continuous journey from uh, what we've seen before from this uh, excavator digging uh, uh, a nice hole. And um, yeah, um, I'd like to ask um, Yuval uh, Barnea to the stage and uh, give the presentation. <laughs> so yeah, we are we are ten minutes early. <laughs> We're too fast. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I can I can go back. And no, no, stay, stay. So the stage is yours, and uh, yeah. Okay, so first of all, thank you all for coming here for my presentation. I hope you're going to enjoy it. My name is uh, Yuval Barnea, and I'm the VP Sales and Marketing at uh, Road Radar. And with your permission, I'll go directly to the presentation. Yes? No, no permission. <laughs> we'll we do great things, but... Uh, Anybody can tell them just to press on the presentation, the PowerPoint? Okay. Ah. Ah, yes. <laughs> okay. As I said, uh, my name is Yuval Barnea, and today's session is Live Dig Radar, Enabling Autonomous Excavation in Urban Environments. So, when we're looking into the autonomous excavation in urban environments and looking into the construction industry, uh, industry challenges, we see that it's highly dynamic. Uh, there are label shortages, especially professional ones. Uh, productivity is the main issue in construction, as well as there are many information gaps that occur continuously. And of course, there's a major safety issue. Autonomous excavation barriers in the market, they include uh, data availability. So even if the data is available, it doesn't come to the right place. It's not in usable manner. Uh, and also there is a need for accurate real-time sensing. Now, and you look into uh, where autonomous excavation happens today. It mainly happens in non-urban environments where there are no utilities, no underground utilities. And it's, it's happening mainly in mining, in agriculture, in solar farms, and other related applications. By the way, you see in the right picture, you see this is an urban environment. This is actually in New York City. It's a maze full of utilities, underground utilities of any type in any depth. So the road to autonomous excavation in urban environments requires real-time, automatic, and on-site detections and alerts to avoid hitting the underground utilities. That's key. Just like in the automotive industry, you need real-time sensing. That's a must. This is actually a picture that I took on my way to work. You see this miserable operator he went to a place, he was digging where there were supposed to be no utilities, but it is there. Across the industry, globally, there are over $100 billion in damages due to heating and damaging underground utilities. Every 30 seconds, somewhere on the globe, it happens. Now, the main issues that result from that are safety, uh, efficiency and productivity issues, and of course, the other uh, impacts such as environmental. So if an excavator hits an underground gas line or an oil pipe or such, there's also an impact on the industry where these materials not only impose safety issues to the environment and the civilians near, it also you know, creates the soil and, and water contamina contamination. So the current solutions are suboptimal. They are missing inaccurate and unreliable utility data. Everywhere you go in the industry, people don't really know where the utilities are. They may have some idea, 
And in the end, even if the data is accurate, the excavator operator still hits these utilities. So there's no real-time on-site and accurate data of buried utilities. That's a critical issue that is a must to resolve before going to autonomous excavation in urban environments. If you look in the industry, up to 50% of the utility strikes are caused by excavators, and the element that hits these utilities is the digging bucket. Now, this example here happened actually in Germany in 2014, but it happens everywhere. Uh, it's no mystery, it happens everywhere. And the excavator has no means to detect and avoid hitting these utilities in real time. So Road Rider's innovation is a live dig radar. It's the first ever ground penetrating radar that was developed from scratch to fit this application. And it's integrated into a digging bucket. A digging bucket that can fit any excavator from any manufacturer. And actually, this, this system, which is integrated into a digging bucket, can be added to any excavator existing or new. I want to emphasize, this is an excavation work tool. It's a job-based system, and it improves the safety and productivity and efficiencies of excavation. So with your permission, we'll see a, a video, a short one. We cannot hear the sound. Radar, the first ever ground penetrating radar integrated in an excavator digging bucket. Very simple. The operator clicks scan a button, the earth and get immediate alerts does a simple scan over the earth or while trenching. And within a second or two, he gets meaningful data where the utilities are in terms Continue of distance caution, from the start of the real -time scan data and the depth. The and this is very tools. critical. This is in real time, without the need of external data interpretation by experts, which is now the only way to interpret GPRs in the, in the world. The system detects any utility type. As you can see in this case, the operator detected fiber optics in plastic conduits. LDR is your only last By the way, this defense. happened in Israel in a major city project productivity where the contractor knew of some information and it was useless. Live the utilities radar. were somewhere else. So live dig radar is the technology from broad radar. <laughs> Summarizing what you've seen. The live dig radar system composes of a digging bucket where the GPR, a ground penetrating radar, is integrated into a digging bucket. Here you see the antenna embedded into the bottom of the bucket. The electronics is part of the system. And on the right hand side, this is the next miracle. This enables the operator in real time very easily to operate, do a short scan. And this is the holy grail of digging in urban environments where there are utilities. What does the operator see? In this case, there are two utilities that were detected. One was 50 centimeters from the start of the scan. The other is one meter. And the two utilities, one of them was between 40 to 60 centimeters. That's a great accuracy. Finally, for something looking into the earth in real time, into the as builds. The other one was even shallower. We focus in road radar at the next digging bite, providing the operator during excavation the ability to detect and avoid these utilities, which are in many cases very shallow. Sometimes the information is the fiber optic is, is within uh, 70 centimeters, but it's much less. It detects any utility types, metal, plastic, any man made obstacles in any type of soil. The benefits and advantages, of course, again, automatic in real time. It detects all utility types, easy installation, simple to use, and it is the only last line of defense. I'll give you a few examples which you'll be happy to relate to. Enel is one of our partners, first European partner. Enel is a big power and energy company from Italy, working also globally. In this case, they have two units, they use the system, and the system performed magnificently 
detecting all kinds of utilities. Jacopo, how does it feel? It's good. It's good. Easy to use. What he says in his English is that it's so easy to use, and he just saw it about, I think, 10 minutes before unoperating it. This comes from Weiss. Weiss is the German contractor from Baden-Baden. Very expertise. After a short training, they were able to immediately detect utilities. The operator said the first and more foremost very interesting things. After 45 years in the industry, this is the first most technical step, even more than the GPS. He's not blind anymore. And of course, the system detected all types of utilities. This is the manager of the industry saying exactly these things. The other example is Haskell. Is Haskell is a $1.25 billion uh, construction company uh, from North America. And again, they were using it in a very big expansion project where most of the utilities were known. Some were not accurate, but the live degrader was able to detect also those unmapped utilities. Here is the Weizmann Institute, major research institute. They did a survey. They used all kinds of sensors to map the area to ensure that they know. What happened that using the live degrader, they were able, the contractor was able to detect a fiber, major fiber optic line that went directly to the major lab. So imagine somebody hitting this fiber optic and damaging the whole thing. And white money is going to mandate the usage of the live degrader. This comes from Colorado, all the way from Aspen, Colorado. Stutzman is a contractor there working on all kinds of projects, municipal so uh, infrastructure. Pretty darn amazing. And based upon what we found thus far today, I'm never hiring anybody else again. <laughs> so, yes. uh, so you saw this municipal manager. He said, I will never hire anyone without it. And the contractor was able to be at least double the production on his excavation. Again, the ability to know in real time where the actual utilities are is a game changer. And it's very easy to adapt and add to any excavator. The final example, again, I don't want to go too much about it. Again, another case where the contractor thought he saw something and he knew something, but in the end, the live degrader detected it somewhere else. And uh, again, the future is beyond this standalone solution is to integrate it with machinery control. And in the future, this, the live degrader is the only way to enable autonomous excavation in urban environments. That's it. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Yes, exactly. But uh, to be honest, I, I love it. But it's for my garden, it's six years too late because they have destroyed the water supply pipe in my garden, and I would love to have this on the, on the excavator. What's the beauty of it is we're looking forward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're but, right. <laughs> but uh, you remind me, we were a major uh, a railway company. I came to there about a year ago. I said, look, if you want to avoid hitting these very strategic communication lines, this is what you need. He said, yes, let's see. About six months ago, they hit the contractor uh, hit a major pipe with major communication lines and as a result they needed to shut down 12 stations for about five days and imagine the millions of dollars that were wasted so but anyway if you're willing and you're interested to more information come start by at our booth 538 we are here and thank you very much for listening yeah i appreciate it yeah maybe um, if there are any questions yeah, sure we have still time for questions so if you have one then you're excited it looks like so no they're happy <laughs> they think they're, they're tired <laughs> yeah but then then i will ask because this water supply pipe was thick like this rubber would it be detected by your device yeah uh, our gpr uh, first of all any gprs but uh, including ours we detect all kinds of utility uh, utility uh, materials plastic metal any made made uh, material it any type of soil and i think one key thing is important many of the Utilities are shallow, and since we focus on the next digging bite, even the shallower ones were able to detect and enable the operator during the process to continuously avoid hitting these utilities. Great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, ah, yes. Yes. Do we have yes. a mic? Yes. Yes. The mic is coming. Two questions. Yes. 
One second. Yeah, all right. Is it compatible uh, with all size of buckets? Thank you. So uh, Gen 1, the solution, as I said, is a complete, it's a bucket, a designated bucket with integrated systems. The first two markets are going to be, I don't know if you come from the US or here locally in Europe, it's 40 centimeters wide or 60 centimeters wide and fit a range of excavators between, you know, up to 2.5 tons, up to 8 tons and up to 16 to 20 tons. In the future, we're going to expand it to other types of buckets. These are the most useful buckets which work and are using excavation environments in, in urban environments. But the same technology is adapted to, to any type of... You wanted to ask another question? Yeah, one more. Uh, <clears throat> for the boring machines, have you got a solution? That's a different type of application. Uh, we are not doing it. Again, there are different... Uh, we're looking... At, every company needs to look at it from the physical point of view, what, how, these, uh, how the application is. This is a completely different application. It can be done. We are not there. Uh, the size, by the way, of the market is immense. Every year, there are about 700 uh, new excavators sold, taking back just a mere four to five years of excavators. Already, there are five million excavators that this system can be easily connected and be useful in the industry. There were some questions in the back. No? No? OK. So thank you. If anybody is a, in an attachment manufacturer, because we're looking to expand into Europe, if you're a, a contractor that is willing to take part of this magnificent uh, road towards uh, eliminating these utility strikes into the future, uh, utility companies, anyone that is interested to take part, we look forward to partnering with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, you are. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. So Thank this you. was...